Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to our English show. I'm Miss Rachel, and I'll be your on-screen English teacher of the day. Hmm, who could that be? Ta -da! Hey, hey, Grand Wiz! It's so good to see you. Hey, Miss Rachel! It's so good to see you as well. Shall we give high five? Ta -da! This is ten. This is air five. Air five. All right. Okay. Hello, beautiful people. My name's Grand Wiz, and I can't wait to learn with you today. Grand Wiz, mm -hmm. where were you yesterday? Um, yesterday. Well, I was at the park yesterday. Hmm. Okay. What did you do there? What did I do there? Well, I had a lot of fun with my friends there. We played on the swings, glided down the slides, and even spun around on the merry-go-round. Sweet. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I I noticed that you're using prepositions in your own sentences. Yes, you're right. I actually did. I had a lot of fun learning them last week, and I thought I should practice using them. Mm, I like that, Grand Wiz. I think we should always put what we learn into practice. Exactly. Here's a quick recap of last week's lesson. We learned about prepositions, which are words that tell us where something is located. We also use prepositions to tell time. Some examples of prepositions are in, on, above, over, across, and many more. Powerful stuff. Thank you, Grand Wiz. You're welcome, Miss Rachel. It's not a big deal. Okay. Grand Wiz, do you like stories? Hmm. I think yes, I do. I even write them in school too. I even get to show and tell in my class. Wow. Okay. Who's your teacher? Hmm. My teacher is Mr. Alex. Do you enjoy his lessons? To be honest, yes, I really do. What do you do while he is teaching? Hmm. Let's let's see. Uh, yes. While Mr. Alex is teaching, I usually take notes. Hmm. I love that. Do you know that your story about Mr. Alex is made out of sentences? Now that you mention it, yes, you're right. And I think there are a few types of sentences, but I can't quite recall what they are. Do you know what they are, Miss Rachel? Yes, I do. Let's take some examples from your story about Mr. Alex. There are generally three types of sentences: simple, compound, and complex. Let's start with the first one. A simple sentence is a sentence that shows us one complete idea. We also call this an independent clause. For example, Mr. Alex is my teacher. A compound sentence is a sentence that combines two or more ideas with commas and conjunctions. For example, if you want to tell others who Mr. Alex is and how you feel about him, you can say, "Mr. Alex is my teacher, and I love his lessons." The conjunction used in this sentence is "an." Conjunctions are words used to join words or sentences, kind of like how glue is to paper. We'll talk more about conjunctions later on in this lesson. A complex sentence is a sentence that is made up of two or more ideas, but one idea can make sense on its own, while the other can't. We also use them、uh, with conjunctions. For example. While Mr. Alex was teaching, I took some notes. 
Can you guess the conjunction used to join the sentence? The conjunction used here is while. And the sentence is also joined with a comma. The first part of the sentence, while Mr. Alex is teaching, is called an independent clause, as it is an incomplete idea. I took some notes is a complete idea, so it is known as an independent clause. Think about it this way. Without the independent clause, the dependent clause would look like a bowl of curry noodles without the noodles, or a plate of nasi lemak without the rice. The meaning would be incomplete and people would be left hanging, trying to guess what you're trying to say. Oh dear, I think I'm still uh, a little confused, Miss Rachel. Mm. Do you mind telling us more about these conjunctions you were talking about? Oh, okay, all right. Conjunctions join words, mm -hmm. phrases, and sentences together. They are like glue to paper. Good writers use conjunctions to join simple sentences and create compound sentences. Think of it like an equation in math. Simple sentence plus conjunction plus simple sentence equals to compound sentence. We can use conjunctions known as coordinating conjunctions. They are used to join words or sentences that are of equal weight or importance. In short, they are the same things. For example, instead of saying, Mr. Alex teaches English, Mr. Alex teaches math, we can combine these two simple sentences and create a compound sentence that sounds like this. Mr. Alex teaches English and math. English and math are both subjects you learn in school. They are in the same category. So we can join them together using the conjunction and. Hmm, that's interesting. I don't need to repeat myself twice. Mm -hmm. By the way, are there any other coordinating conjunctions besides and, Miss Rachel? Yes, there are. We call them fanboys. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. Let's talk about what each of them mean. I'll give you some examples too. Okay. For is a fancy way of saying because. It shows a reason and answers the question why. For example, could you please pass me the salt for I cannot reach it? And is like a greedy person. You add more information to a sentence. For example, I would like some extra peanuts and sambal in my naslama, please. No is like someone who doesn't like anything. For example, I won't help you now, nor will I help you later. Hmm. But is used to disagree or debate. For example, English class is fun, but it can be hard sometimes. Or is used when there are choices for you to make. You need to choose. For example, do you want nasi lemak or chakwe tiao for dinner? Yet is a fancy version of but. For example, I was enjoying the party, yet I want to go home. <laughs> so shows a result of someone's actions. For example, Jeremy did not do his homework, so his teacher scolded him. Is this easier for you to understand, Gramwiz? Yes, it is much clearer now. Miss Rachel, um, what do you call words such as because and although? That's a great question, Gramwiz. We call them 
subordinating conjunctions. To put it simply, they are conjunctions that introduce clauses that don't make sense on their own. I see. But where should we put it in a sentence, though? Okay. You should use subordinating conjunctions in front of a dependent clause. In short, clauses that do not have a complete idea. Uh -huh. Here are some examples of subordinating conjunctions that we use every day. Because is used to show reason. For example, Eugene's mother scolded him because he did not make his bed. If is used to show condition. For example, you will miss the bus if you wake up late. Although is used to show two sentences with opposite meaning. For example, Kyria did not shout at the police although they were mean to her. You can also use it in front of a sentence. For example, Although the police were mean to Kyria, she did not shout at them. Since is used to show the result of someone's actions. For example, I feel better now since you are here. Other examples include after, as, even though, so that, that, and while. Whoa, that was so interesting. I didn't know how useful these words were. There's one more. The last type of conjunctions are called correlative conjunctions. These conjunctions come in pairs. They are used to join two ideas of the same category. Here are some examples. Either or is used to show choices, usually telling people that they can choose one of two items. For example, you can either have coffee or tea. Neither nor is used to show that someone does not want anything. For example, neither Jeremy nor Jared want any tea. It's practice time. Take it away, Grand Wiz. Sure. Thank you, Miss Rachel. Dear friends, here are five sentences with conjunctions in them. Could you help identify them? Number one, Alvin loves cake and sushi. Yes, you're right. It is N. Good job, friends. Let's go to the next sentence. Number two, Amanda went to school although she was feeling tired. Bingo! It's although. Good job. Next question. Number three. Either D or Nourish can help you with your homework. You got it right. The answer is either or. You're doing wonderful. Let's go to question four. Jack could not go to school because he was sick. Yes, that's correct. The answer is because. You are so good at this, friends. Here is our last question of the day. Question 5. Greg enjoys jogging while Anna enjoys swimming. You are right. It's wow. Fantastic job, friends. Thank you, Grand Wiz. Welcome. Okay. I think everyone did so well. Let's try another exercise, shall we? Yes, we definitely should. All right, here we go. Let's play a game called, is this sentence correct? I'll show you three sentences 
And for each sentence, tell me if the sentence is correct. If it is not, shout out the conjunction, oh, the correct conjunction for the sentence. Jerry did not go to school and he had a fever. Is this sentence correct? No, it isn't. How can we improve it, Gramwis? Oh, you should replace you should replace N with because or for as this sentence shows the reason why Jerry did not go to school. That's correct, Gramwis. Here's the next one. Although Joanna made her father angry, he did not scold her. Is this sentence correct? Hmm, let me think. I think it is correct. And you're absolutely right. Here's the final question. Andy wants to bake some chocolate cake if he did not have any chocolate chips. Is this sentence correct, friends? Hmm. No, it isn't. The correct answer should be but, as the sentence is showing two opposite ideas. Fantastic! You got it right, Gramwitz. You did well too, everyone. I'm so proud of you. I'm having so much fun, Miss Rachel. What are we going to do next? I'm glad you're excited. Next up, it's challenge time. For this segment, we're going to go on a treasure hunt. Arr, what do we need to do, Miss Rachel? I'm curious. Okay, here's what you need to do. I'll show you a picture on the screen. Look for what I'm talking about. Shout it out if you see the treasure. Are you ready, everyone? Aye, aye, Captain. Here we go. Number one. I spy with my little eye something round and red. Is it an apple? You got it! That's correct! Number two, I spy with my little eye something blue, but not black. Hmm, is it a blue water bottle? Bingo! You got it! Next one. Number three, I spy with my little eye Someone who works in a hospital and a fruit. Oh dear, this is a little challenging. Mm, is it a doctor and a watermelon? Oh, you're so good. Yes, that's correct. Good job, Gwemwis. Give yourself a pat on the back. Good job, everyone. Thank you. Well, Miss Rachel, I'm sure our friends in front of the TV would like to get to know you better. Can I ask you a few questions? Sounds fun! Remember to use conjunctions. You can join us at home too, friends. Well, I'm going to try. First one, do you like apples or oranges? Uh, I like apples and oranges. Mm, do you prefer coffee or tea? I prefer coffee. Coffee it is. Next one. Do you like fruits or vegetables? I like fruits, but I don't like vegetables. Mm, fair enough. Last question. What do you like to do in your free time? Hmm. I like to draw or sing during my free time. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much, Miss Rachel. 
I think by now, I should be able to get to know you a little bit more. Now, dear friends, let's do a quick recap on what we learned today. Gramwiz, could you help mm -hmm. me? Sure. Uh, I don't think that should be a problem. Let's begin, Miss Rachel. What are simple sentences and compound sentences? Simple sentences are sentences that show one complete idea. Compound sentences are created by joining two simple sentences using conjunctions. What are conjunctions? This is another piece of cake. <laughs> conjunctions are words used to join words or sentences. They are like glue to paper. Good job. How many types of conjunctions are there? Another easy question. There are three types of conjunctions. The first one is called coordinating, and then we have subordinating, and finally, correlative conjunctions. Amazing job, Gramwiz! Dear friends, I think every one of you did a lovely job learning with us today. Give yourself an applause and a good hold! Good old hip hip hooray! Hip hip hooray! Thanks, Gramwiz. Dear friends, imagine a world without conjunctions. Hmm. Can I get some burgers and fries? If there were no conjunctions, it would be Can I get some burger fries? Burger fries? What even is that? Burgers with french fries as a patty? Ew! Mm -mm. Tell me about it. Or instead of Sasha loves swimming and running, if there were no conjunctions, it would become Sasha loves swimming, swimming running. running? Is this a new sport? Come on, underwater running? <laughs> this is such a joke. <laughs> this is why conjunctions are so important. We can use them to join words and sentences and create new ideas. Yes, once again, they are like glue. You got that right, Grandpa's. Speaking about glue, we've got eight interesting facts about glue to share with you, dear friends. Take it away, Miss Rachel. One, the earliest known example of humans using natural glues come from 200,000 years ago. Our ancestors in Italy used birch bark tar to bind stones together. 2. One square inch of super glue can hold an item that weighs around one ton. Wow! Number 3. The first written record of glue comes from ancient Egypt. One of the earliest examples of hieroglyphs that showed a casket of Pharaoh to the common that was glued together with glue made from animals. Number four, do you know that super glue was invented by accident twice? It was invented by a Dr. Harry Coover in 1942 and 1951. It was later put on the market by a company called Eastman Kodak in 1958. Number five. There are many types of glue available in the market today. Up to 16 types, such as craft glue, wood glue, super glue, fabric glue, hot glue, and epoxy. Number six, glues work well when it is in liquid form. This is because it helps it to fill up even the smallest nook and crannies, and then harden into a solid state. Number seven. The first ever glue factory was established in Holland in the year 1690. And finally, number eight. Do you know that you can make your own glue at home? Try this. Mix wheat, flour, and water together. You can use it to make all sorts of art. That's right. You can use it to make paper mache crafts, collages, or just stick paper together. That was wonderful. Yeah. We really hope you enjoyed learning those fun facts with us. All right, Miss Rachel, what's our mega challenge for today? 
Thanks for the reminder, Gramwis. I almost forgot about it. Dear friends, for this week's mega challenge, we would like you to write four to five sentences using four different conjunctions. Of course, here's an example from my friend Judy. My name is Judy. I love to run and swim. My favorite fruit is watermelon. I love it because it is sweet mm, and juicy. I love to stay fit, so I exercise every day. Thank you, Gramwis. Dear friends, it's been such a fun time learning with you. Gramwis, mm -hmm. thank you so much for joining us today. You're most welcome, Miss Rachel. I am so, so glad that I could join you. Dear friends, don't forget to take a picture of your sentences and put it up on social media and hashtag Grammy Right, Grammys, and Grammar Made Easy. You can also draw a picture of yourself. We cannot wait to see what you'll come up with. Till then, it's time for us to go. Thank you for joining us today and see you soon.